Have you ever wondered about the fascinating dichotomy between the royal family's domestic life and their public image? It's a captivating conundrum that piques the interest of royal enthusiasts and casual observers alike. On one hand, you have the picture-perfect portrayal of Prince William and Kate, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, a tableau of familial dedication and regal charm. But, on the other, there are whispers of palace intrigue, of the mundane realities veiled by the grandeur of royal life. Is Prince William truly the paragon of conjugal devotion as some suggest? Or does the narrative shift, hinting at a more hands-off approach, an illustrious man more accustomed to delegation than to domesticity? And where does the trusted nanny, Maria Theresa Turian Boralo, fit into this enchanting narrative? These questions form the backdrop of our exploration, a captivating tale of duty, devotion, and the discreet support that upholds the pageantry of the crown. Join us as we delve into the captivating tale of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. In the public eye, Prince William is often seen as a paragon of marital devotion. Ah, the concept is as enchanting as it is enticing. The Duke of Cambridge, a modern-day knight in shining armor, tending to his convalescent wife with the dedication of a hero in a chivalric tale. This image, carefully crafted and presented to us by a media ever hungry for the next captivating narrative, paints a picture of a man as attentive to his wife's needs as he is to the duties of his royal station. Grant Herald, an insider from the royal service, supports this narrative. He extols Prince William's virtues, emphasizing his caring nature and attentive demeanor. According to him, the Duke of Cambridge is not just a prince in title, but also in action. He is the embodiment of chivalry, a man who prioritizes his wife's well-being above all else, even amidst the demands of his royal responsibilities. Yet, this narrative is not without its dissenters. There are those who suggest that Prince William, despite his many virtues, may be less hands-on than the media portrays. They argue that the Duke, like many of his royal predecessors, is more accustomed to delegating tasks than to engaging in them directly. In this light, the image of Prince William as a doting husband may be less a reflection of reality and more a product of public relations. Even the role of Maria Theresa Turian Boralo, the family's trusted nanny, raises questions about the true nature of royal domesticity. Her prominent role in the family's life underscores the fact that the responsibilities of child-rearing and convalescence are often shared with a well-appointed staff. Richard Fitzwilliam's remarks further amplify this point, suggesting a pragmatic division of duty in which the demands of royal life are balanced by a reliance on skilled and dedicated professionals. Yet, as with all narratives, there is another side to this story, a side that reminds us that the monarchy operates not just on the strengths of its leading figures, but on the collective effort of those who serve it. It is a tale of duty, devotion, and the discreet support that upholds the pageantry of the crown. Behind the grandeur of palace walls, a different narrative unfolds. The royal life is not just about regal ceremonies or glittering galas. It also involves the seamless orchestration of domestic affairs, often handled by a well-appointed staff. Enter Maria Theresa Turian Boralo, the trusted nanny of the Cambridge family. Her role in the royal household underscores the notion that royal childrearing and convalescence are not solely the province of parental toil, but endeavors supported by a team of skilled and devoted professionals. Observers like Richard Fitzwilliams further paint this picture, suggesting a pragmatic division of duty, where the exigencies of royal life are balanced by a reliance on these professionals. The Duke and Duchess, like any couple, navigate personal and public spheres, but with the added complexity of an institution resting on their shoulders. Thus, the royal household operates as a finely tuned machine, balancing duty, devotion, and discreet support. In the end, the royal family's narrative is one of duty, devotion, and support. It's a dance of dedication, where each step is as crucial as the next. The Duke of Cambridge, Prince William, is not just a figurehead, but a caring husband, balancing his royal obligations with his commitment to his convalescent wife, Kate. Yet, this is not a solo performance. The supporting cast comes into play, with figures like Maria Theresa Turian Boralo, the family's trusted nanny, taking center stage. Royal childrearing and convalescence are not solitary endeavors. 
their shared responsibilities, handled by a team of skilled and devoted professionals. The monarchy, like any institution, thrives on the collective efforts of those who serve it. It's a pragmatic division of duty, where the exigencies of royal life are balanced with the need for personal care and attention. And so, the tale of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge continues, a fascinating blend of duty, devotion, and the discreet support that upholds the pageantry of the crown. What makes the royal family so fascinating to the public? Is it their regal lifestyle, their historic lineage, or perhaps, their intricate family dynamics that capture our attention? Recently, the world was gripped by the announcement of King Charles's illness. This news was met with a wave of public concern and sympathy, a testament to the deep emotional connection that people across the globe feel towards the royal family. No one can deny the shared human experience of worrying for a loved one's health, and in this instance, the royal family is no different. In response to this news, a notable reaction came from across the ocean. Prince Harry, who has made headlines with his decision to step back from royal duties, made a swift decision to return to his homeland. His journey back to the UK, marked by a police escort from Heathrow to London, suggests a coordinated effort between him and the palace. This indicates that his visit was planned in response to his father's health news, highlighting the persistent familial ties that remain despite the well-documented tensions and public scrutiny. As news of King Charles's health spread, a familiar face was preparing for a poignant homecoming. Enter, Prince Harry. Following the announcement, Prince Harry embarked on a journey that was not just geographical, but emotional as well. Leaving behind the sunny landscapes of the United States, he was drawn back to the familiar grey skies of his homeland, the United Kingdom. His arrival at Heathrow was met with a police escort, a testament to his royal status and the gravity of the situation that had beckoned him home. This escort, a journey from the bustling airport through the heart of London, was not a solitary one. It was a journey that, in many ways, was shared with the palace. In the wake of King Charles's health news, the coordination between Harry and the palace was evident, a silent echo of unity reverberating through the well-documented tensions of the past. This was not a spontaneous visit, but rather a calculated response to a personal crisis, underscoring the unbreakable bonds of family that persist, even within the gilded walls of a palace. It was a journey marked by the anticipation of a reunion, a potential reconciliation, and the hope for healing amidst the backdrop of a father's health concerns. In the face of adversity, family ties seem to pull tighter, even for a prince. Amidst the backdrop of King Charles's health concerns, a glimmer of hope for reconciliation appeared. As the royal family grapples with the shocking news of the king's illness, Prince Harry's return home has sparked a wave of speculation and intrigue, particularly surrounding a brief, yet significant meeting between father and son at Clarence House. In the heart of London, within the hallowed walls of the royal residence, a four to five minute encounter unfolded. A private dialogue, away from the prying eyes of the world, yet bearing the weight of the world's expectations. This meeting, brief as it may have been, is a testament to the profound significance of personal relationships amidst the grandeur of royal life, and the potential for healing even in the most strained of relationships. This encounter, seemingly orchestrated by courtiers, was a rare moment of father-son conversation. It was a moment that offered a glimpse into the private lives of a family that is perpetually under the public gaze. A moment that is speculated to have been filled with hope, understanding, and perhaps even a touch of nostalgia. The importance of this meeting cannot be overstated. In the midst of public duties and familial tensions, it is these personal interactions, these private conversations, that form the bedrock of familial ties. It is these moments that remind us that beneath the crowns and titles, they are, at their core, a father and a son. This interaction may be a testament to the complexities and challenges of navigating familial relationships within the royal context. In the grand scheme of royal life, it is these personal moments that truly shape the narrative of this fascinating family. The world watched with bated breath as Prince Harry returned home, underscoring our collective fascination with the royal family. This fascination is not only about the opulence and tradition that the monarchy represents,
but also about the human stories behind the royal titles. The media coverage of Harry's return was intense, with every move scrutinized, every gesture analyzed. The public was eager to see a narrative of reconciliation and duty unfold, a narrative that highlights the complexities of being part of a family that is always in the public eye. The themes of reconciliation, duty, and the delicate balance between personal and public life are not new to the royal family. They have always been part of their narrative, and Harry's return has brought these themes to the forefront once again. Amidst the backdrop of King Charles's health concerns, the hope for private father-son conversations and the speculated courtier interventions illustrate the ongoing public intrigue with the royal family's internal dynamics. The royal family, like any other, has to navigate the complexities of familial relationships. But unlike most families, their personal matters often intersect with their public roles. The challenge they face is striking the right balance between addressing personal matters and fulfilling their public duties. The fascination with the royal family is not just about their royal status, but about how they navigate these challenges. In the end, it's the human stories behind the royal titles that captivate us, reminding us that beneath the crowns and the palaces, they too are a family, facing life's trials and tribulations together. Is Queen Camilla the quiet beacon of the royal family in these times of change and uncertainty? As the monarchy navigates a period of relative tranquility, with King Charles and the Waleses momentarily stepping out of the limelight, a new figure has gracefully emerged at center stage. Queen Camilla, with the poise of a seasoned royal, has been carving out her space in the public eye, marking a solitary yet radiant presence in royal engagements. Her recent activities underscore not only her dedication to her royal duties but also reflect the important work of the institutions she supports, such as Maggie's centers. In the face of adversity, her commitment to causes that touch the lives of many remains unwavering. With a quiet strength and an air of contentment, Queen Camilla navigates her royal duties with grace and determination. Her presence, while subtle, is profoundly impactful, in the midst of all, Queen Camilla shines with an air of contentment that is as noticeable as it is admirable. Queen Camilla's recent visit to Maggie's Royal Free, a new cancer support center in London, speaks volumes of her dedication. With the grace of a seasoned royal, she stepped into the center, her presence a beacon of hope and solidarity. There was an air of purpose and resolve around her, a testament to her long-standing commitment to the cause. Her role in inaugurating the center was not merely ceremonial. It was a continuation of a journey she embarked on back in 2008. Yes, for more than a decade and a half, Queen Camilla has been a patron of Maggie Centers, establishments that offer a sanctuary of care and support to those grappling with cancer. And her recent visit was a reaffirmation of the importance she places on these centers and the invaluable work they do. These centers are not just buildings. They are sanctuaries, places where people can find comfort, support, and understanding in times of great personal challenge. They offer resources that are often overlooked but are invaluable to those dealing with cancer and their families. And Queen Camilla, with her patronage, has played a significant role in shedding light on these resources, bringing them to the forefront of public consciousness. The Queen's involvement with Maggie's centers is a reflection of the royal family's enduring commitment to causes that resonate with the lives of many. It is a testament to their willingness to lend their voice, their time, and their influence to help create a better world. It showcases the compassion and support that lie at the heart of royal philanthropy. Queen Camilla's visit to Maggie's Royal Free is not just a royal engagement. It is an embodiment of her dedication, her compassion, and her commitment to a cause that touches the lives of many. It is a narrative of steadfast dedication gracefully intertwined with the fabric of royal duty. Her involvement with these centers highlights the compassion and support that lie at the heart of royal philanthropy. The Queen's brief update on King Charles's health during her visit offers a glimpse into the personal side of royal life. In a world where the monarchy often seems cloaked in an aura of regal mystique, this candid moment serves as a gentle reminder of the human element that underlies the royal family. It's a simple, yet powerful statement that shatters the usual royal facade, allowing us a peek behind the curtain. Queen Camilla, with her characteristic grace and poise, 
manages to balance the demands of public duty with the private concerns of her family. In doing so, she subtly underscores the humanizing truth that even those who wear crowns are not immune to life's trials and tribulations. These instances, as rare as they may be, serve as poignant reminders that the royalty, much like us, navigate through life's ups and downs. Her unwavering presence in the public eye during this period reflects not just her personal strength but the resilience and continuity of the monarchy. Queen Camilla's journey positions her as a formidable figure within the royal family. Her determination, coupled with an adeptness in navigating the royal landscape, has seen her rise to become a key figure within the monarchy. A seasoned royal, she has shown an unwavering commitment to her duties, even amid quieter phases for the monarchy. Her work, particularly with Maggie Centers, is a testament to the impact she has made. She's not simply a figurehead, but an active participant in causes that touch the lives of many. Her role as patron since 2008 has shed light on the invaluable resources these centers provide to those grappling with cancer and their families. This work, subtly yet profoundly, intertwines with the fabric of royal duty, embodying the compassion and support that lie at the heart of royal philanthropy. As Queen Camilla continues to engage in such meaningful work, one can't help but acknowledge the subtle yet profound impact of her presence. Have you heard the latest about King Charles' health? The regal rhythms of Buckingham Palace are a tad samba today, as the venerable halls echo with news not of pomp, but of pause. His Majesty, King Charles, the sovereign who reigns with both duty and dedication, faces a health hurdle most harrowing. A diagnosis of cancer has indeed emerged from what was initially a benign prostate enlargement. The King's calendar of ceremonious engagements is now taking a brief respite as he embraces a regimen of treatment with a spirit as indomitable as the crown itself. Yet, amidst the trials of treatment at a London hospital, the King's resolve remains as steadfast as the Tower of London. He's not one to let the scepter slip, his royal responsibilities, including tete-a-tetes with the Prime Minister and the pivotal perusal of red boxes, shall continue unabated. Indeed, the king's calendar is taking a brief respite, but his royal responsibilities shall continue unabated. So, how is the royal family coping with this news? In the face of adversity, the royal family's unity and strength shine brighter than ever. The Duke of Sussex, though nestled in the sunny climes of California, is no stranger to the call of duty and kinship. Preparations are underway for him to traverse continents and join his family back in the United Kingdom. A testament to the powerful bonds of blood and duty, his journey underscores the solidarity that binds this regal tapestry together. Meanwhile, the Queen, an emblem of compassion and grace, continues to fulfill her royal engagements. Unfazed by the trials that the family faces, she stands as the beacon of duty and dedication, her presence in the public sphere a comforting reassurance to the nation. Her stoic resolve serves as a reminder of the unwavering spirit that the monarchy embodies, a spirit that refuses to buckle under pressure. As King Charles embarks on his journey towards recovery, the royal family rallies around him, their unity echoing through the grand halls of Buckingham Palace. Each member, in their own unique way, contributes to the collective strength that the family exudes, a strength that is as resolute as the Tower of London itself. Through this narrative of resilience and resolve, the royal family paints a picture of unity in the face of adversity, a picture as stately as the palace gardens themselves. Despite the miles and the duties, the royal family stands united, a testament to their bonds of blood and duty. And what about the nation, how are they responding to the king's health situation? In the wake of the king's diagnosis, a wave of support has swept across the United Kingdom, a testament to the enduring affection for the monarchy. The news has reached every corner of the nation, echoing through the valleys of Wales, reverberating off the highlands of Scotland, and resonating within the hearts of Northern Ireland's populace. This is not just a story of a king and his health, it is a narrative that binds us all, transcending borders and differences. It is a shared tale of resilience and resolve, a testament to the indomitable spirit that defines the United Kingdom. It is a story that highlights the collective empathy of a nation, a country united in its well-wishes for its sovereign. From the farmer in Cornwall to the shopkeeper in Edinburgh, from the teacher in Belfast to the miner in Swansea, 
People from all walks of life have paused, their daily routines momentarily suspended, replaced by a shared concern for their king. Expressions of support have poured in, a chorus of well wishes echoing throughout the nation, each sentiment as heartfelt as the last. And as we stand together, our hearts united in hope and solidarity, we find strength in our collective spirit. We are reminded once again of the ties that bind us, the shared narrative that makes us one. From Wales' heartfelt Gwell had Buan to Scotland's prayers and Northern Ireland's hopes, the King's Health Saga has united the nation in a chorus of well wishes. As we stand together, what's next for our King Charles? As we look ahead, we see not just a monarch, but a man of indomitable spirit, tackling a personal hurdle with the same tenacity and dedication he has always shown in his royal duties. His Majesty's journey, as harrowing as it may be, is a testament to his strength, his courage, and his unwavering resolve. His road to recovery may be steep, but it's a path he treads with the fortitude of a king and the heart of a lion. And as he does, he carries with him the hopes and prayers of a nation, the support of his family, and the strength of his own indomitable spirit. His eyes, as ever, are firmly set on the horizon, a horizon of recovery, of return to duty, of resumption of the regal rhythms that define his reign. With the wisdom of Windsor and the courage of a king, his majesty navigates this challenge, his eyes firmly set on the horizon of recovery and return to regal duties. Have you ever wondered how a simple choice of accessory can set tongues wagging? Such is the power of the royal influence, particularly when it's the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle making the choice. When the Duchess steps out, the world watches, scrutinizes, and often, imitates. It's a phenomenon that's been coined the Meghan Effect, a royal endorsement that can catapult a brand into the limelight overnight. Take for instance the Duchess's choice of earrings. A small detail you might think, but in the world of fashion and royalty it's anything but. Meghan's preference for Kimai's lab-grown diamonds didn't just make headlines, it led to a surge in interest and investment for the young company. So let's delve into this intriguing tale of royal influence, where the choice of a single accessory can ripple out, creating waves that reach far beyond the palace walls. Indeed, a mere gesture like wearing a pair of earrings can have a butterfly effect of the grandest scale. So, why did Duchess Meghan opt for the Kimai brand's lab-grown diamonds? You may wonder. The Duchess, known for her impeccable style and discerning taste, made a choice that is both sophisticated and thought-provoking. Duchess Meghan is no stranger to the dazzling allure of diamonds. Yet, her choice to adorn herself with Kimai's lab-grown diamonds is an intriguing departure from the conventional preference for mined stones. This decision is a testament to her support for innovative and ethical fashion. It's a bold statement that resonates with the contemporary values of sustainability and ethics. Lab-grown diamonds, you see, are just as real and just as beautiful as their mind counterparts. But the process of creating them is far less damaging to our environment. It involves no mining, no soil displacement, and most importantly, no human suffering. By choosing lab-grown diamonds, Duchess Meghan subtly conveys a message of environmental responsibility and social consciousness. But the Duchess's choice goes beyond the diamonds themselves. By opting for Kimai, a relatively new and innovative brand, she is championing the cause of small businesses and startups. It's a powerful endorsement that provides a much-needed boost to these fledgling enterprises, helping them flourish and grow. At the heart of this choice is a woman who is unafraid to challenge the status quo. Duchess Meghan, through her actions, is redefining what it means to be a modern royal. She's not just influencing fashion trends, she's shaping values and sparking conversations around important issues. She's demonstrating that style and substance can indeed go hand in hand. And so with every appearance, every choice of accessory, Duchess Meghan continues to captivate and inspire. She is a royal who's not just in touch with the times, but one who's actively shaping them. She's a duchess who is redefining royalty for the modern era. It's a tale of modern royalty embracing modernity, not just in style but in substance. And what about the impact on Kimai? Well, let's just say that the Duchess's endorsement set off quite the royal rumble. Overnight, the brand was catapulted into the limelight with the Duchess's faithful followers, fashion enthusiasts and even casual onlookers eager to get a taste of this newfound sparkle. Kimai's lab-grown diamonds, previously a niche choice for the discerning few, 
suddenly found themselves gracing the pages of glossy magazines and the feeds of countless social media platforms. Their visibility soared, and with it, their appeal to a wider, more varied audience. But it wasn't just visibility that the Duchess's endorsement brought. The royal seal of approval also led to a handsome sum of investment pouring into the young company. Kimai, once a fledgling brand, was now standing tall, with a bright and promising future ahead. In the grand tapestry of royal engagements, this seemingly minute act had a profound effect. So, what's next for the Duchess and her sartorial statements? It's a question that's on everyone's lips. As we've seen, the Duchess's fashion choices can have a profound impact on the industry. Her endorsement can catapult a brand into the limelight and her commitment to ethical and sustainable fashion can influence industry trends. Every appearance she makes is a potential game changer. The anticipation is always palpable, with fashion enthusiasts and industry insiders alike eagerly awaiting her next ensemble. Will she choose another fledgling brand and give it a much-needed boost? Will she continue to champion sustainable fashion and further solidify its place in the industry? Or will she surprise us all with a bold, unexpected choice that sets tongues wagging and headlines blaring? The possibilities are endless, and the influence of the Duchess is undeniable. One cannot help but admire her acumen in both fashion and influence, leaving us all eagerly awaiting her next sartorial statement.